How are you? Good, yeah, how are you? Very really nice good. here. Nice to the location, isn't it? We just um, built this yesterday. It's good work, Rupert just me Reed's and, amazing. Me and, me and the guys just oh, popped okay. it up. Good work. Yeah. Um, no, tell bi me no biggie. <laughs> tell me, now obviously, um, this story's had many, many different incarnations. How would you describe this version of Snow White? Uh, it's kind of Snow White on steroids, isn't it? It's, it's um, I mean, it's the thematically it's there, but it really takes on a life of its own and, and, and is its own story, um, which I loved. I loved the sort of the huntsman wasn't very prominent in the original, and then in this he, he's there, and even sort of romantically it goes in a different direction to what we know. Um, I love sort of the, the scale of it, you know, the, the fact that it, it reminded me of um, Lord of the Rings or something, you know, it, it, the and the locations, it was all, it, Rupert was very, uh, uh, you know, motivated to not shoot on green screen. He wanted to be real locations. We had places like this, and you know, real locations, the snow-capped mountains and, and in the mud and in the rain and real cathedrals and castles. And, and it's just it's such a benefit from that, you know, no matter how, I mean, special effects, they're great these days, but there's nothing like a real location, you know, even as an actor, it helps you, you know, involve yourself easier, but as an audience, it just looks so much richer and that, that that was what I loved about it. Yeah, it does. It does look great. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, so you've touched on it briefly there, but what, I mean, what were the main things that made you go, yeah, I really, I really want to get involved in this project and I'm excited to get um, Initially, I, it was, I kind of got sent the script. Um, it was just as Thor had come out. And coming off the back of that, I didn't want to do another sort of fantasy-based sort of film. I thought, it's too similar. And, and then read the script and loved it and then met with Rupert. And that was really, for me, when I jumped on board. I mean, he'd shot this... Uh, you know, five-minute trailer that you know as a pitch for the film um, in about two days, and, and looked like he'd spent five months on it and hundred million dollars. You know, but he shot it for nothing. And so I thought, wow, if he can do that with that kind of budget, then imagine what he can do on a, on a real scale. And uh, and also, he's pitched for story. He wasn't just visually creative and, and genius, which he is, but he he had a real take on who these characters were, and he's written scripts himself and understanding of story and and and. That's what makes these work, you know, is the combination of visual effects and locations, but it's got to be a story and character at the centre of it, and, and that's, that's all to him. Yeah, that's great. So um, let's talk about your Snow White now. Let's yeah. talk about Kristen a little bit and playing opposite her. And how it's it great. Um, I, you know, the, I keep hearing asked what was similar about the, you know, Snow White and Kristen, and I think both of them have, uh, you know, a real strong sense of right and wrong and justice and, 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 and passion behind their motives. and, and um, she was extremely protective of her character on set about, no, 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 this is how she should go, this is where she should go, and this is what she should do. And it's great. And there's nothing worse than someone sitting on the fence with a character and, well, you know, not really, you know, brave enough to commit to something where she grabbed it and went with it and uh, everyone else follows them. You know, she sort of set the standard and, uh, and uh, we, just a great amount of fun too, you know. I mean, that was kind of in the scenes, but then in between takes and offset, it was... Uh, you know, just a, a great, a great group of people, and she was fantastic. Yeah, because you obviously did you have to do a lot of training together, you two, and a little bit. It was, um, I mean, my fight sequence was a. <laughs> there was one fight sequence with her. It was wasn't even a fight sequence. It was a punch that she had to, to throw, and we'd rehearsed it a couple of times. It was fine, and then, three, four takes in, she uh, got a little close and punched me in the face. Deliberately. Uh, it's a good punch. Too. <laughs> it's a good punch. I said, "You've never hit anyone before. You're not a professional boxer. We don't know about it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then let's talk about um, Charlie's a little bit. She's an so amazing, isn't oh, she? Oh, incredible, yeah. Um, the, my first couple of weeks of the shoot was supposed to be pretty mim minimal. I'd come off shooting Avengers and, and straight into this and didn't have any prep time. So and they said, don't worry, the schedule's light. And then the day I get there, they said, ah, we've changed a couple of things and your first scene tomorrow is with Charlize and it's the big scene in the castle. And I was like, I haven't even met her, I haven't even rehearsed, I don't even know, what, you know, I don't even know the lines. And uh, so that was an intimidating set to walk onto, but um, look, I mean, she is just so good that she, you can't help but kind of be sucked into the moment, you know, and, and uh, but scary, you know, especially when she's playing the queen and she's eyeballing you down, <laughs> down the middle and uh, it, it was great though. Yeah, because she's statuesque, isn't she, in those costumes. Yeah, so Academy Award and beautiful and tall and she's <laughs> up there on the throne and... It's like, you know, I'm sorry, whatever I did, I don't even know if I did it, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you were pretty, in some ways you probably prepped already for this role in some respects, but obviously there's yeah. the accent and stuff like that. Mm. What sort of stuff did you do to... Um, yeah, we wanted to, um, you know, we discussed sort of accent and, and who this guy was and we, we injected a sort of Scottish feel in there just to sort of separate him from the, everybody else. We wanted him to be, you know, different from the Queen and from Snow White. He was a 
different, you know, different upbringing. And uh, also just, just, I love the music of the, the Scottish accent and the very earthly sort of tone to it. And he's the huntsman, he's the, he's the man of the woods and, um, and it just fit, it worked. Uh, and then there was a number of conversations, you know, with Rupert about sort of who this guy was and where he's coming from. Um, but we had a great script. I mean, that was the end of the day. It was sort of on the page, and we turned up and did our bit with what we were given, which was um, already already there, thankfully. I mean, John Lee Hancock came in and did some work on the script at one stage, and um, he wrote Unforgiven, and we discussed kind of the, this sort of Western mm. character and quality to this guy, uh, the, the Huntsman, and, and which um, I hope is I hope is there because it was I love those style of films and that reluctant sort of hero and they're rough and dirty around the edges, but there's a heart of gold in there somewhere and, and uh, uh, that was certainly you know motivation.